Well, basically, you know, I'm originally from the Bronx, New York, um, home of hip hop. And like, you know, I had the privilege of growing up like in like the 80s and like, you know, being a kid in the 80s, especially in New York City, everything's changing. You know, Ed Koch was the man at the time. Crack cocaine is now flooding the streets. Everybody's moving differently than they were probably like in the late 70s. And so like, you know, hip hop is now just starting to penetrate mainstream because like, you know, like before, before I guess like 1979, like, you know, hip hop was really just sequestered to like clubs and parties. They were, it, the revolution was not televised. You know, prior to Sugar Hill coming out. So, like, you know, so to be in the, its infancy and be able to um, see these songs finally start making their way to radio, sprinkling their way into R&B records. I remember, like, when Shaka Khan came out with I Feel For You. Like, yo, people who loved hip-hop lived for that Melly Mel rap break in the record. And we get mad whenever a station would play the version that didn't have a... Let me go, I'm gonna bracket Shaka Khan. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, yo, where, where, where my man part at? So, I, I was eating all that up, man. Big Michael Jackson fan as a kid. Um, I had to thrill it tape. At one point in time, I could do all of the choreography. Dolo. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the whole nine. Like, the whole nine. Like, Dolo. Um, so, like, big Michael Jackson fan. And so, just, you know, so being around as these things are starting to blow up, watching and studying Michael Jackson so hard, you know, I knew I wanted to entertain people in some way, side, shape, or form. Because, like, when you look at the therapy in which music provided, it's like, yo, like, I might not want to be a doctor because that's boring, but like the way this man's music makes people feel, the way Run DMC makes a whole generation of kids want to go out there and dress, this this is a thing. And then even listening to like radio DJs at the time, listening to the power that a guy like Frankie Crocker had, or the power that like a guy like, uh, you know, eventually, like, you know, Red Alert, DJ Chuck Chill Out, later in the 90s, Funk Master Flex, listening to the type of power that these people had over the people and how it dictated the energy of an entire city. I knew I wanted to be a part of that. So it became my life's work. You know, I would buy every album that ever came out when it was possible for it to be done. Like, you know, because when you think about music that was coming out like in the 80s and 90s, it wasn't like how it is today. Like two albums have dropped since we started this podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like, but back then you had to make that appointment on Tuesdays, music was coming out and it is what it is. So I used to take my lunch money for the week and I would gamble it. And I would use that money to go buy music. Cause like, you know, like, you know, we didn't really have the type of expendable income, especially as it relates to like, when I was like, uh, in my preteens, like my mom and my pops were separated and we just didn't have money for all the extras. So like, I would just hustle and just like, just do whatever I could to get money. I remember uh, when I used to live in Tracy Towers in the Bronx, me and my friends, we would, um, whenever like the phone books would get dropped off downstairs, we would take them all and go door to door and sell them. We wouldn't make that much money. And they'd be like, they're selling these now? He's like, yeah, it's a new thing that they doing. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah, we would just take whatever we could get for it. we take that money, go get a slice of pizza, go buy Transformers G.I. Joe's, or go buy like vinyl and just like, and, like hang out at my friend's crib and listen to it. Me being in high school, still taking my younger New York ways with me to Texas. And um, I used to shoot dice like all the time. So whenever you roll four, five, six, they call that a head crack. So I'm in like study hall, you hear the dice shaking, da, 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 head crack. And then like, um, Sadat X from Brand Ubians, he had a song called Slow Down. Well, Brand Ubians had a song called Slow Down. And this is the part where it goes, yeah, head crack, head crack. And then this other group called the Double X Posse came out with a song called The Head Cracker too. And it's just like, it just, the timing was right. I'm shooting dice all the time, I'm yelling head crack all the time. I'm like the only person in my high school who knew how to play dice because I'm the New York kid in Texas, so I'm making the rules up as I go along. So the name just fit perfect. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, I didn't really win as many games as I said I did. But I mean, oh no, you roll a four, five, six in your first roll, you lost. <laughs> no, you supposed to hit a seven. Like, I, man, like, yo, I was, I was playing the game bad, man. I was, I was a gypsy.